Hey guys, Travis Gillespie. We just went over how we got to knowing our real no number system, what makes up our real number system. Basically, we just defined it. But now let's take a look at some actual problems and see how to solve them. So, go into the pencil, get a good color to choose from and write with. Uh, let's take a look at the square root of 3 and ask, well, why? what is the square root of 3 and how do I classify it? The way I'm going to do this is let's start with the number line because realistically I don't know how to solve the square root of 3 without um, a calculator. So I'll get a calculator out probably in a minute here. But uh, the square root of 3, let's take a look at the square root of 1, then the square root of 4. And you can ask yourself, hey, What's the square root of 1? Well, it's 1. What's the square root of 4? Well, it's 2. Its root is 2. So the square root of 3 is somewhere in between 1 and 4. And also, its root has got to be between the number 1 and 2. So therefore, you know it's going to be a decimal. Because the square root of 3 ends up right there. So it's going to be 1 point something, something, something. I don't know what that number is. But since it is not a perfect square like the square root of 1 and the square root of 4 are, not a perfect square, it's got to be an irrational number. So it's irrational. This is uh, supposed to be an I, and these are supposed to be dots to represent that this decimal continues on, and I don't know what it, what it actually equals without a calculator. But I can look up here and say, hey, I wrote the square root of 3 is irrational, but it's got to be irrational for one of two reasons. It's non-repeating decimal, non-terminating decimal. So let's get a calculator out. And guys, if I were to pull my calculator out, I could say right here, okay, let's take a look at the square root of 3. All right, uh, second, square root of 3 would equal 1.73205, etc., etc. I can see that Yes, none of the decimals are repeating. They're not the same value. And furthermore, they're not terminating. They're filling up the screen and so on. Therefore, move to the side. And since the square root of 3 is not a perfect square, that's the take-home message. It is an irrational, and irrational ends with an L, not an A, irrational number. But also, irrational numbers are a set of real numbers, so therefore, it is also a real number. Let's go on to a second problem here. The second problem would say, what is the value of negative 58.58? Well, obviously, we can see that, hey, after the second decimal, 8, it stops. It terminates. Since the decimal terminates, it's terminating. It's a rational number, and all rational numbers are real numbers. So this guy separate these two here. This one is rational and real. Again, rational ends with an L, not an A. Let's go on to another problem here. This problem I'll say, what is the square root of 9 over 3? Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so I end up with 3 over 3, which is one. Well, you know from the very beginning we learned that one is a counting number. You can see that here. One is a counting number. It's also a whole number. It's also an integer. It is also a rational number, so therefore it is also going to be a real number. So it's all of the above. So I'll, I'm going to start at whole rather than counting numbers. Just say it's whole. It is also an integer. also a rational number, and is also real. Thank you.